Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential system of equations. We have 2 to the power x times 3 to the power y equals 12, and 2 to the power y times 3 to the power x equals 18. And we're going to be solving for x and y, which means this is a system of equations with two variables. Okay, are the solutions integers, real, complex? We're going to find out. Are there any complex solutions? That's something to think about, right? But I have another channel, which is called A plus BI, that focuses on complex numbers. I make a video a couple times a week on that channel. Go ahead and check it out and let us know what you think. All right. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem in more than one way, even though my methods are not always complete because, first of all, I'm kind of lazy. Second, they take a while to do. Again, I'm lazy. Same thing. But anyways, so I like to do problems in more than one way. But again, sometimes I just leave them to the viewer, okay? That's for you to complete. As an exercise, don't get me wrong. So, let's start with the first method. My first method, the first one that I thought of was using logs, because if the exponents are in the variables, did I say it right? Or the variables are in the exponents. I think it's the other way around. If the variables are in the exponents, then it's a good idea to take logs, because the logs, properties of logs, uh, can be used to bring those variables down, which is a good thing because our ex equation can turn from exponential to linear. And you'll see that in a little bit, okay? So let's go ahead and take the first equation and log it. And by the way, this choice is yours. Uh, I'm using base 10 in this case, but you can use the natural log or whatever you like, okay? So a log both sides, if two things are equal, then their logs are equal because it's kind of like a well-defined function. Now, we can go ahead and use two properties, but I'm going to use uh, them uh, one at a time so you're not confused. I know some people say, oh, why do you skip steps? And some people say, why do you not skip steps? So how do you find the middle ground, right? Anyways, so first of all, if you log a product, it turns into the sum of a log. Sum of logs, I mean. So you can separate it like this, okay? And then if you have an exponent, like log something to the power something, then those powers can be brought down here and here, like this. So this becomes x log 2 plus y log 3 equals log 12. And why did I call this linear? Because if you think about it, this is linear in x and y. Because log 2 and log 3 are constants, think of them as a and b, you get something like ax plus by, which is linear in two variables, of course. Do the same thing, and to keep a long story short, you're going to get something like this, y log 2, plus x log 3, so they're going to switch roles, basically. And, of course, we have a different number on the right-hand side. Awesome. Now, how do you solve this system? There are many ways to do it. Substitution is one, which I'm not sure if you would want to do that. That looks kind of confusing. And elimination is another one. I like the elimination better in this case, so I would like to um, first pick what you want to eliminate. Okay, I want to eliminate y and find x first. Okay. So let's go ahead and multiply the top equation by log 2, like everything. And so that's going to give us uh, the coefficient of y as log 2 times log 3. So we do need the log 3, but that should be a negative sign or minus sign so that they can cancel out. So that's going to negate, and we're going to end up with something like this. If you go ahead and distribute and subtract, you should be getting something like x times log 2 squared minus x times log 3 squared equals, you're going to be multiplying, uh, obviously, y cancels out, log 2, log 12, and I want to use parentheses so we're not confused, minus log 3, log 18, okay, it's not going to fit, so allow me to write it here, like that, okay, and then of course we can factor out an x and write this as log 2 squared minus log 3 squared equals this, blah, blah, blah. And then you can divide both sides by log 2 squared minus log 3 squared to get the answer, right? Well, it kind of looks confusing, doesn't it? But here's the thing. The denominator is difference of two squares, and that can be broken down. And after you break it down, that can actually be simplified because you're going to get the sum and the difference of two logs which can be turned into the log of a product and log of a quotient. Okay? Make sense? 
So definitely that can be simplified and log 12 can be broken down, so on and so forth. But like I said earlier, this method, unfortunately, is going to be incomplete. But I'm going to show you an alternative approach to the first one. I wish I picked it for the second method because that will be a 2B or not 2B, but I still said it too bad. But it's 1B, method 1, uh, maybe branch B, whatever. So that works like this. Notice that we got x log 2 plus y log 3 equals log 12 and y log 2 plus x log 3 is log 18, right? Now, I just realized that if I add these equations directly, I get a common factor. So I get x plus y multiplied by log 2. But not only that, these two also have a common factor. And that happens to be the same thing, x plus y. That's really cool, right? And then the sum is going to be on the right-hand side, log 12 plus log 18. Great. So we can take out x plus y. And then this can be log 2 plus log 3, which can be turned into log 2 times 3 or log 6, by the way. But let's just hold on to that for now. You can do, always do it later. And then finally, we can divide both sides by log 2 plus log 3 to find x plus y. Now, is this helpful or any better? I'm not sure. But I just wanted to show you, yes, this is one way to pursue. Maybe from uh, one of the equations, you're going to use substitution or whatever. And hopefully you can use this. Okay? But I have another approach that I'd like to talk about. And that is called the second method. Usually my favorite, but you're going to let me know which one you like better. Okay? Ready? Okay. Let's rewrite the equation. The system, I mean. 2 to the x, 3 to the y is 12, and 2 to the y, 3 to the x is 8. And hopefully you memorized it by now, right? You've seen it many times. Here's how it works. Why don't we just, instead of logging both sides, that's a waste of time, right? Let's just multiply these equations because we can bring these together. When you multiply 2 to the power x and 2 to the y, you get 2 to the power x plus y. Same thing with the 3, you get x plus y, and 12 times 18. Awesome. This is really cool. You know why? Because they have a common exponent, so that means we can multiply the bases, which gives us 6 to the power x plus y. But on the right-hand side, I don't really have 6. Well, I do, plenty. 2 times 6 and 3 times 6. And guess what? 2 times 3 also makes another 6, so this is 6 to the third power, which is, ta-da, mathematic, hocus-pocus, right? So from here, we get x plus y equals 3. Are you serious? With the first method, you found x plus y. So is this actually 3? If you simplify this, you're going to realize that it is indeed 3, okay? But anyways, that's a different story. Uh, by the way, uh, how the way it's 3 is this is log 6, and this is log 12 times 18. If you think about it, that's supposed to be 216, which is 6 to the third power. Anyways, that's a different story. You can hopefully go ahead and do that yourself, okay? That's x plus y. So I do need another equation, don't I? Yes. How do you get that? You can go ahead and divide these equations because this is a really nice system spe specifically made for this uh, kind of thing like kind of competition level problem when you divide them uh, this simplifies divide by six you get two-thirds how awesome and here you get two to the x divided by two to the y but that's not what we're shooting for we want to get these two things together you know why because they have the same common exponent i mean you can also do i guess you can do either way I don't think it's going to matter. You know what? It could be easy. Let's do that. This is going to give me 2 to the power x minus y. And this is going to give me 3 to the power y minus x. Uh-oh. I wanted x minus y on both. That's okay. We can flip this and negate the exponent. So it's going to look like this. Yay. This works. Of course, it's made to work. Now, this is 2 over 3 to the power x minus y. And that is equal to 2 thirds. This means x minus y is equal to 1, which is awesome because we already know x plus y is equal to 3. And if you solve this as a system, right, we can get x and y from here. And that's what we were trying to solve for, right? So let's go ahead and do this. 2x is 4, x is equal to 2, and y is equal to 1. And that seems to be the only solution to the system, don't you think? And this brings us to the end of this video. I was going to say system, of course, system two, but thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget, to, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out A plus B I and bye-bye.